one of the things that I was saying earlier, I had um, signed on earlier and kicked myself off accidentally. Um, um, all right, why do I think I need to change to my laptop? Because Facebook is not Facebooking on my tablet. Hi, Caroline, welcome back. You know, it doesn't matter how much you prepare for some things. You're just not going to know everything, can I tell you? But anyway, so I was waiting for a few more persons, but I guess I can start in the interim because it's Sunday afternoon and I don't want everybody, anybody being here forever and a day. The reason I decided to do this live, um, which I'm hoping I can do once a month, the first Sunday of every month, at the same time, so you can put it in your calendars from now, the first Sunday of every month, um, at 6 p.m. I decided to do this live because I'm going through perimenopause and right now I'm in the middle, I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning, I think, to full-blown menopause, but I'm waiting to get some test results that will tell me whether or not I'm really trying, I'm really fully into menopause. But as I I said the reason I wanted to do this is because of the scares I had or I have had in the last few months that um, made I've been to four different doctors between May and July, May, June, July, right? Four different doctors, four different um, keeps asking me to rotate my phone. Or I guess it doesn't work in portrait mode. I think you may have to just turn on the auto rotate thing on your phone and just flip your phone around and it should work. Um, right. So I had some scares in May and again in July. And uh, it is at that point, as a matter of fact, I didn't know in May, it is after the additional scares in July um, that I realized or recognized that I was or I am in perimenopause um my bestie who is online with me right now denise is has been my rock and been guiding me through a lot of this because like me when she was going through this she didn't know as well and she followed afterwards so she can guide me through a lot of things that i'm going through now but let's start with this scare in may i had uh, what i thought and recognized afterwards that it was just a panic attack in the middle of the night so this is like two o'clock in the morning I wake up heart palpitations can't breathe every time I try to get up I'm on the verge of blocking out I got scared um, luckily one of my brothers lives close enough to me so at two o'clock in the morning after two in the morning I'm calling him panicking because every time I try to move I'm passing out um, went on for a little while I managed to get up and went and had something sweet I always have those little moss apple juices in the house had that to, to drink and then for some reason I started calming down a little and um went to lie down by the time my brother got here um my blood pressure was just all over the place high low high low my heart still wasn't settled down and everything was just going crazy Eventually, um, I am hypertensive, but controlled hypertensive, so I don't need to take medication every day. But because of um, what I'd say, family history, the doctors will not take me off of the medication because if my blood pressure spikes too high at any given time, anything can happen. So I take them a couple times per week. So of course, you know. No homegirl popped the blood pressure tablet because blood pressure going, going over the place, and um, I'm still not calm enough, and I'm still not, not settled enough. Eventually, I settled down, and first thing I did, I sent my cardiologist a note to say, "This is what happened at two o'clock in the morning. I'm scared shitless. Um, what do I do? Because of my family history, both my parents died from heart disease. He told me to come in immediately." I went in, um, he did a ECG that came back clear. So, out of my heart. 
But because he wanted to be thorough, I had to wear a heart monitor monitor for 24 hours. Now this is me walking around can bed properly for 24 hours in a decent heat here with things all over my chest and I had to wear that for 24 hours. That test came back quite fine. So I said okay maybe it's just a panic attack. I have a lot of stuff going on so it's just a regular panic attack. Fast forward to July. One Saturday night, same thing happened again. Sunday night, same thing happened again. Monday morning, I'm back in a different doctor's office. I said, okay, so we get rid of the heart problem. It's not heart. Um, spoke to that doctor. He asked me all the different steps I took. Told him everything I did. And he started to think that, okay, maybe it is hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia is when your blood sugar keeps falling low and you get the dizzy spells, the fainting, they feel bad, they um, wanted to go to the bathroom, the whole works. So they all mimic each other. So the hypoglycemia was mimicking um, heart arrhythmia, which is what my cardiologist thought I was having earlier in me. Did all of the tests, everything came back clear. I mean, I have no hypoglycemia. So I went to my regular GP um, and had a discussions about what the cardiologist said, what this other doctor said. He looked at all of the results. I told him all that was happening. Um, at the time too, I was having bad sinus issues. And so I thought I was having a fever because I'm sitting here with my fan, have on two standing fans, clothes soaking wet. And then by the time I go and change the clothes and come back and lie down in the couch feeling all mashed up and can't move, I started to feel cold. And I'm like, okay, I'm having fever. So I'm going to start dunk Panadol because homegirl is having fever. So I'm taking Panadol. Anyway, went to my doctor, had a conversation. And lo and behold, after the doctor sat and listened to me rant about everything that happened in the last few months, and he reviewed all of the test results, he says, oh, so you're hot having hot flashes, you're in perimenopause, or you've just transitioned to menopause. And I was like, say what now? So I just, just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars because I'm in perimenopause, because it was mimicking heart arrhythmias and hypoglycemia and me over here thinking we have fever, I'm going crazy. He was like, yeah, and there are many other symptoms. Some women have a lot of them, some women have none of them. Um, I don't know which one of you on here know going through this, but if you are, just send me a little wave signal. Or if you can figure out how to, how to open your mics and talk to me, <laughs> that would be good. Because I feel like I'm talking to myself, even though I see you guys online, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Um, but yeah. So those are some of the things that I have been going through. And then now that I'm sitting down and thinking about it and looking back at how all the things that happened last year in, into this year, I'm like, holy crap. So all this time I was going through perimenopause and did not have a clue. There was a time where I even went to counseling last year because I thought I was going crazy, literally depressed to the point where I thought I was going crazy. Those ladies are signs and symptoms of perimenopause. Yes, Carrie, I see the hot flashes. Yes, and this is why currently I have two fans on me, okay? Because the room I'm in doesn't have any AC. So I have two fans on me and I have this in my hand and my front door is wide open. So you must understand. Luckily, right now, I'm dry. I'm not sweltering and flooding with liquid coming out of my pores. I am cool-ish for this time. Yeah, but it is real. And I was listening to something today and I'm trying to figure out if I had written it down. Yes, the lady says, perimenopause is the predictability of the unpredictable. It's the predictability of the unpredictable and she's so right because when I was looking at all the signs and the symptoms of perimenopause I'm like but those are 
signs and symptoms of so many other things. So how in God's heaven am I supposed to just randomly think that these are perimenopausal symptoms? I mean, yes, may I get old? I acknowledge that. I'm closer to 50 than 20. But at the same time, is it too late to save your eggs? <laughs> well, I don't think my eggs work, honey. Um, endometriosis took care of that and polycystic ovaries took care of that. So I don't think my eggs are the ones that are worth saving. And going closer to 50, um, I've come to terms with the fact that I will not have a child and I will not try to start having a child at this point. And um, I don't know how well surrogacy works in Jamaica, but um, I'm good with where I am in life. I have my godchildren, I have my nephews. Um, I'm a walk around, I adopt people pick me. So yeah, I'm good. Carlene, I will want to take with your own. Don't come to Jamaica with her. <laughs> or when I come up there, hide her from me. How is that? <laughs> He's such a sweetheart, though. Really such a sweetheart. But yeah. The thing I was listening to today, too, spoke about 80 symptoms of menopause. 80. And there are some women who have all 80. I hope to God I'm never that woman, okay? Because I cannot imagine the ones that I've had so far and adding to that. So let me just run down some of the ones that I've had. You'll share her. her oh, thank you. I love that. <laughs> some of the, the ones that I, ha I have had, which I did not associate with perimenopause before, no, before my GP looked at me and said, one of my GP, GPs because apparently I have three GPs. Yeah, yeah. One of my GPs looked at me and said, Oh, you're going through perimenopause. You can get with child during menopause. Oh, really? Really, Denise? I can become pregnant with a child during menopause? Well, I think um anything is possible because people over 50 are having children because some persons have not fully um stopped seen their periods so they, there is that chance yes I don't have a period have not had one in quite a few years because I wear an IUD because of my endometriosis so I don't have a period so it's, it's, it's even harder for me to detect that I'm going into menopause because usually doctors use the um, you're slowing down of your periods or the stopping of your periods after a period of time Stopping up your peers after a period of them. <laughs> um, to, to, to let you know that um, you can get an egg donor. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Never thought of that. Um, you can get, oh, this is, by the way, ladies, is something that happens. You'll be in the middle of your speech and then you forget what you're there. <laughs> That has been happening so often now that um, I ju I've just given up on it. Um, oh, you said it. Okay, cool. At 35. Nice. Nice. I didn't think of that, actually. That thought never crossed my mind, Carlene. And um, as I say, at this point, I don't think these eggs over here are <laughs> active. Or want to be active but yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so i was saying that um i did not know that half of these symptoms that i was having were related to perimenopause because i just assumed that they were other things and rightly so because a lot of us women think that um we're having some other mental breakdown some other physical breakdown because we have so many other things going on with our body um, Denise says one full 12 months without a period to be diagnosed as menopausal, right? I, I won't have that. So it's harder for me to detect that I'm in menopause. 
I just did a test, a hormonal test, which is called ovarian, I don't remember, but it's an ovarian function test. And that should show whether or not I am in menopause or near to menopause, depending on what um, the results come out to be. The doctor, the gynecologist will, will review that and determine, um, use that as a basis to help to determine whether or not I'm menopausal because, as I said before, I don't have a period, so therefore I won't know exactly when I am in menopause. But some, I'm just going to run through some of the, the symptoms I've had um, now that I can associate all of these things to perimenopause. Um, I've had a blurry vision. I wear glasses. Same here. Half a time, off late. I can't see Jack through this. I'm reading and I'm like, okay. First of all, I have I've, I've forever had a problem with using them because they're, what are something new? Progressive lenses. And you're supposed to look through a certain part for reading versus computer versus over yonder. The only one that works for me is when I look in over yonder. Nothing else works. So half of the time, it's on a desk somewhere. And when I'm trying to use it to read, I realize that no, one of my symptoms is a blurry vision. So I have 21 things written down here that I have gone through so far and still go through. 21. <laughs> Carrie says she had to change her glasses. Girl, not spend no more money changing it because you might change it tomorrow. And perimenopause make you can't see the next day, clearly. Okay, so now spend more money on it. I've had a blur vision. I've had a hot flashes. I've had a cold flashes. I've had the constant fatigue. Now, let me tell you something. You see that something there? I'm a, and Denise, who is online here, will tell you. I'm a busybody. I can't keep quiet. And when I tell her that I cannot move from my couch or my floor <laughs> because you never knew Carrie. Yeah? Trust me. Because I am always, always a busybody. So when I tell her no, that I can't move from my couch, I can't move from my bed, I can't come off my floor, I can't do anything. I'm unproductive because I'm just constantly tired. I don't usually take supplements and I've had to go to buy B complex, vitamin C, fish oil, and I've just ordered my um see the forgetfulness. Um primrose oil tablets. Um I've heard a lot of persons talk about it. I have friends who use it and swear by it. It helps with the hot flashes it helps with the mood swings it helps to normalize your hormones so if you are in this stage already or you're transitioning into this stage i'd advise you to get it and start taking it the forgetting what you're saying you, you for those of you who have been on since six o'clock you've seen me go through that phase quite a bit since you've been on i'll be in the middle of a sentence and then i don't remember what i'm saying forgetting where you put things I went into my fridge looking for my phone because I had gone, to, gone into my fridge earlier and I had no clue where the phone was. Mind you, the phone was exactly where it was before on the table, but I went into the fridge looking for the phone. Panic attacks. I've had three sets of panic attacks in the last three months. And that is how I found out that I'm perimenopausal heading into menopause. Because at first, as I said before, my cardiologist thought I was having heart arrhythmias. We ruled that out. My doctors thought I was having hypoglycemia, which is my blood pressure, my, sorry, my blood sugar dropping too much. We ruled that out. And that's when the realization hit everybody that, oh, you're in a perimenopause or you're just a transition to full-blown menopause. I've had the skin rashes. I have quite a bit of them on my hand now. Um, I've had a heart palpitations, the sensitivity to smells. There are perfumes I used to wear. I cannot wear them anymore. There are deodorants I 
I used to wear, I cannot put them on. I feel like they're dead when I put them on. I have night sweats, weight gain, especially, I'm not ready to stand up right now, but the poop, yeah, that area there, that's where a lot of your perimenopause and menopausal weight gain comes in your pooch, in your belly, and it's hard to get rid of. But I'm working for the summer body for next year, so me and it is going to become very friendly around here. Um, breast sensitivity that you is one of the symptoms and signs of perimenopause. Um, you'll have on your brazier all day when you get home and you take off your brazier, it's like somebody they have beat you, and every you can't even touch yourself. Yeah, that happens. That also happens when you're having your regular cycle, but it's for me, I think it has been more pronounced no than when I used to have a cycle. Anxiety like, like you've never had it before. You get anxious about everything, even the things that you do so well on a regular basis, you get super anxious about them. You have the mood swings, <laughs> that's for another life. Hmm, I can tell you about those. I go from zero to 100 in split seconds, worse if my hungry. So my hunger and my perimenopause not working together. You have headaches. And one of the things I will say, and I noticed it in me, noticed it with me. If you have or you suffer from allergies or you suffer from migraines, all of those, those things are heightened during perimenopause. So be aware. So for me, my sense of smell has heightened. And as I said before, there are some things that I used to wear that I can't wear anymore. Um, my sense of taste too has slightly changed. There are foods, regular chicken that I used to eat all the time. There are days now that I cannot even look at chicken. Somebody said to me yesterday, or was it the day before that, she feels like when she was pregnant because she's having all of these, I can't eat this, this upset me, this smell, make me feel bad, all of those things. Like when she was pregnant, those are the things that are happening to her now that she's going through perimenopause. And she's like, I can't deal with this though. I'm not pregnant. Why am I going through this again? But it happens and we just need to be aware of them. And that's why I wanted to start this conversation. There's a lot of things out there, a lot. Um, there are more, more and more persons talking about this. And I want to talk about it because I have a magazine that deals with women over 40. Uh, my blog and my website is about women over 40 or well-being, health, lifestyle, etc. And so I want to have these conversations because had I not had friends who have been through this already and understand what I'm going through to be able to walk me through it, I would have been left wondering what other ailments and illnesses I'm having when really and truly I'm just going through perimenopause. And I wanted the conversations to be real. Now you see people talk about um, the regular signs and symptoms, which is, you know, the blurry vision and the body odors and the this and that. But I want to get down into the nitty gritty. I want us to have conversations about how exactly you feel. I came on here and I spoke about my having my panic attacks in the middle of the night thinking that I'm having heart arrhythmia, thinking I'm going to die by myself in my house because that is how I felt. And if you have partners or other persons living in the house with you, they too need to understand what you're going through so that they can be more supportive. Because when you're going through this phase of your life, ladies, which can start from last from one month to 10 years, yeah, when I heard the 10-year part, I sucked my teeth so hard, I don't know how I still have been any, because I'm like 10 years of this. I'm hoping I'm not that female. I would like to have just one month, but that obviously is not going to happen because I've gone through quite a few months. Um, I know that I think about it. I've been going through this for over a year. I just didn't know what I was going through, and I'm 47. Um so it can start at any age. You don't have to be in your 50s for any of this to happen. It can start as early as in your 30s. 
um, some research has shown where it has started. <laughs> yes, Gary, 10 years. What the heck? Yes, 10 years. A lot of research and a lot of the information you see out there speaks about this 10 year gap. Hey, yes, it real. 10 years. We will not go through 10 years. None of us on here will go through 10 years, hopefully. Because if I'm going through this, as I said before, I have two fans on me right now. And I'm getting stuffy as you hear it because temperature is changing. My body's reacting to it. Marine says, I'm entering my 10th year and the hot flashes hasn't stopped. Seriously, Marine? You just have a converse, me and Kerry Bubble. Oh my God. 10 years and you're still having hot flashes? Um, I don't know if you can open your mic, Marine, or you can just type, but how have you managed 10 years of hot flashes? I mean, I've just had few of them as i said to the girl the ladies earlier i thought i was having fever over here because i was having sinus issues so i thought i was going i was having some a bout of fever just to find out eh -eh. fever may not make water run down your front head to toe and you stand up in the kitchen and you're standing in a puddle of your own water yes that is what happened i was standing in my own puddle of water and then getting very cold right thereafter but marine if you can type in the chat and let us know how did you manage? How have you been managing? What are some of the, the things that you can tell us to look out for or to do? Um, should we have to deal with 10 years of hot flashes? My God. Um, one of the other signs and symptoms I had was the pins and needles in my hands, especially. I'd wake up in the middle of the night um, and have pins and needles. I have itchy ear. You feel like some Thing is walking up and down inside of your ear um it's not really but as i said because the signs and symptoms of perimenopause mimic so many other things i would advise you if anything is happening to happening to you which is outside of the norm that you cannot put a finger on please go and have it checked out don't just say oh it's perimenopause and don't get it checked please get it checked out for your own health and safety get it done um denny says jamaican doctors don't believe in hrt which is hormone replacement therapy right they are they are of the belief that it causes cervical cancer so if you beg and plead they might grant you three months supply but you're not getting any more from them there is a lot in uh, the global space that speaks about that um that hormone Hormone replacement therapy can lead to cervical cancer. Um, um, so are many other things that can lead to so many other things. But our Jamaican doctors, if you are in Jamaica, the most they will give you is three months and that's it. Um, and they will tell you to try other natural remedies. One of the things um, I have been told is to reduce your sugar consumption, um, which is good because it um, helps to reduce other um, medical issues that you can get from consuming too much sugar. So reduce your sugar intake, exercise more often, um, try to do meditation, um, which I've actually started back my meditation. I do a five, to 10 minute meditation thing in the mornings. I don't do it every morning, but I try. And I just go on YouTube and find them. And it really helps to settle your mind. Um, so if you can try it, do try it. It's hard. I will not lie, because I'm in the middle of meditation and my mind is, oh, what may I go eat for breakfast? What may I cook for dinner? What may I do today? Do I have this to do? Do I have this report to do? So my mind is going all over the place. But after a while, you learn how to settle your mind so that you can calm yourself and get into a zone that help, helps to calm you down and get you through the days. Marine says, just keeping it real, the good thing with me is that it is not constant. I'll go for months and think it's over, then suddenly it's back. Yeah. Um, and that's the sad thing though uh 
we just don't know when it will stop until it just one day stops. And hopefully it's sooner than later instead of later. Um, anyone? I'm not sure who is online because I can't even see what is happening on that part. Um, one of the other things that you need to look out for too is changes in your menstrual cycle. For those who have a menstrual cycle, the changes in your menstrual cycle, you can have longer periods, um, longer, heavier periods, or shorter, lighter periods. One thing um, the doctors will tell you is if you're having longer, heavier periods, you need to actually go in and get that checked out because it can be something else. And as I said, with all of the signs and symptoms of perimenopause and menopause, they all can mimic something else. So to be on the safe side, if you're not 100% sure, I would advise you to get checked to make sure it is not something else. Um, Marsha says, hi, Marsha. Marsha says she's been affected by changes in her menstrual cycle, which is what I just alluded to. It can get heavier and longer, and it can be shorter and lighter. For those of you like me, who, who fortunately or unfortunately um, don't, don't have a cycle, then it's harder to, det to detect that you're transitioning into menopause because you don't have that 12 months of no period to use as your marker. Um, but you can use other things and the doctors will guide you accordingly. And as I said before, there are tests that you can do that will tell you whether or not you're heading into this space. And right, Kerry says also a longer time between periods, right? So if you used to have a regular 28 day cycle, sometimes now you're at 48 days, 50 days before your senior next period. So it is a mix of things. Longer periods, longer time span between shorter periods. This disappears for a while, then reappears long and heavier than usual. Okay, so these are all things that you can look out for um, um, with the changes that, that are happening in our bodies. The one, one thing I find quite interesting, though, is that even though Trisha says, for me, I've been experiencing forgetfulness, girl. <laughs> I can tell you about that. I'll be walking to my car. I'm supposed to be leaving the house. And I'm like, um, am I forgetting something? And then I come back in the house and I search for a million and one thing. I never forget anything. Or I'll be having a conversation and I can't remember what I was saying to you. Then he says, your partner can help. We're telling you about vaginal dryness. You swear you're rest and ready. Ready? Ready. A ready, ready, me, I think, but I don't know. You swear you are wet and ready, and he struggles with entry. Yes. Um, vaginal dryness is real. Thankfully, I'm not there and hope never to be. But, um, and also with vaginal dryness, a lot of women have reported that they have lower sex drive. I mean, I have that. My sex drive is through the roof. I'd like to find a way to quell it, but I'm not speaking it into being because I'd like it to remain that way. Um, but there are things that you can do. If you're having vaginal dryness, you can get lubricants that are over the counter. Um, and they have some very nice ones. Uh, it's not back in the day where it's the plain KY jelly where smell bad. You can get, you can have strawberry flavors, mango flavors, all kind of flavors. And they're made in mind so that you don't end up with all kind of itchy things going on down there. Some women have increased libido and others become asexual. Okay. I have the increased libido. Libido. Mine is. Yeah, very increased. 
Water-based lubricants are a good start. I have heightened sex drive and dryness is not an issue. Yeah, I don't have the dryness issue and I have a heightened sex drive to the point where I will want to sit and cry because I'm constantly horny. But yes. Um, there's also... When I was reading something earlier, and it says that perimenopause is simply a midlife transition where you're moving from your reproductive years to your non-reproductive years. You know what I read? I read moving from your productive years to your non-productive years, not reproductive. I never saw the word re in front of anything. And, and I laughed when I recognized what it is that I had read because guess what? You actually get non-productive. You, you get to the point where you don't want to be doing anything. You don't want to cook for yourself. You don't want to wash up your dishes. You don't want to clean your house. You don't want to go to work. You don't want, you don't want to do nothing. And you, you really, really, really have to push yourself. I am going through that phase. As a matter of fact, and I told my best it is, I think it's since week, I had an epiphany. <laughs> and I said, I think perimenopause, perimenopause made me leave my job. Yeah. I left my job at the end of February. Multiple reasons. But now I can associate some of them to perimenopause. The depression, they're not liking the work, they're not liking what we're doing, we don't want to go to work. I'm not being productive. I'm not, I'm just in a depressed zone. Mind you, I had a lot of things going on. But also, I had a lot of perimenopause symptoms happening, which I did not recognize were perimenopausal. And so, so I'm blaming perimenopause for me walking off my work but I don't regret it um, and I'm transitioning into another phase of my life so I, I'm, I'm not having any regrets and I'm not even going to add a word yet to it because I will not have any regrets but ladies it is it is a very it can be a very difficult period and how we treat with it, how we, the knowledge we get and give unto ourselves, the more we talk about it so that we can understand it better, will be better for us. Um, I don't want to hold up your Sunday evening much longer. And as I said, this is something I want to do the first Sunday of every month at 6 p.m. so you can mark it in your calendar so that we can talk talk about what is affecting us during this phase of our life it is not easy and sometimes when you don't have support and when the doctors are not telling you what it is because they too don't believe that you're going through this phase um, it is hard and it can lead to a lot of things you can become really depressed about it and being in a depressed mode can lead to a lot of other things. So um, I don't know if anybody else has anything else left to say at this point in time. Um, but it is so... Hi, Carol. I know you as Shirley. I don't know you as that other name. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> Welcome. And you're coming in when I'm almost about to close off. Um, but just to wrap it up, um, this is a conversation I want to have. <laughs> this is a conversation I want to have once a month. Um, the first Sunday of every month, mark it in your calendars, ladies. Tell your friends about it. Let's have this conversation. Um, thank you for this because I had to laugh at myself when I realized I was experiencing hot flashes. Me too. I bust out one big dirty laugh in a doctor's office and I'm like, say what now? Yeah, because I never knew. Hi, Anissa. Thank you for having this conversation. Very needed. I have been having 
many of the symptoms you have mentioned, girl, trust me, it is real, it is frustrating. But as I said, if we all come together and have the conversation, I believe it will make it easier for us as we transition into the next phase of our lives. Because as I said, it can take a few months, it can take up to 10 years. And the more we arm ourselves with knowledge, the better it is for us. Had I known a lot of the things I know now, before thinking I was having heart palpitations and dying, and before I thought I was having hypoglycemia and dying, um, then it would have made my life easier. My dear, I still would have gone on and done the test because I'm not taking any chances because it can be anything. But I, I would have handled a lot of things differently. One, one of the things I will leave you with that I recognize with myself is that there are days when I'm having lows and you will have those days. Um, I can feel it coming on. Uh, okay, Carrie, I soon tell you. I will, I, um, I will feel it coming on. I start feeling myself getting a bit dizzy. My whole inside start feeling shaky and I'm feeling out of it. And this usually happens before the hot flashes start. Sometimes the hot flashes don't come at all. So what have I started to do? I just find a little space. It doesn't matter where I am. I don't care if I'm having a conversation with you, in the middle of a conversation with you, I stop talking and I just rest back. And I used to see my girlfriend do it and I often wondered why she was doing it. At the time too, she never really realized what she, what she was going through, why she was doing it. But then she recognized afterwards. I would just sit, stop, close my eyes. And as my doctor said, just breathe deeply. Deep breaths in and out. For a few minutes it helps it works wonders and as i said it doesn't matter where you are you could be in the middle of the supermarket lean up on shelf you could be outside doing something just stop you owe it to yourself and you will feel better once you do it i've had to pull off the road i'm driving and all of this starts to happen and i pull off and I called my girlfriend and I said, just talk to me. Just talk to me. I need to calm down. And, and I start calming down. I start taking my deep breaths. I'm listening to her talk and stuff. Music also helps. So if, if you've never liked music before, now is a good time. Music helps. Especially if you can find the calming ones that you can listen at night before you go to your bed. It really helps to calm your system down. And when I was having my panic attacks, that's what I use every single night. I put on one of those and I listen to it. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have the links here. But what I'll do for the next live in September, I'll make sure I have a lot of those links to the things that you can access, the music, the calming stuff, the meditations. I'll put up all of those or I'll share them in the comments because I think this is going to be posted to my Facebook feed. So I'll post the stuff in the comments and you can go there and access those links. Then he says B12 complex evening primrose oil tablets and fish oil tablets. Yes. I have actually started on the B complex and the fish oil tablets and I'll be getting my evening primrose tablets this week so I can start on those. So Kerry, you can, you can get those and start on them. I don't like taking tablets because I have to take tablets for other medical issues. So guess what? Because none of my conditions require me to take my medication every single day, I don't. Um, and then I take my supplements. I try to remember to take them every day. I'm not good at it. I will not lie, but I try. Um, so that is my, my many two cents for today. Um, there's a quote from menopause society that says it's not about surviving the menopause or perimenopause it's thriving through them and i want us all to thrive through our perimenopause and menopausal state it's a transition in our bodies it's a lot our bodies are going through a whole lot um it affects 
affects us mentally, physically, emotionally. Every alley you can think of, it affects us. And so I want to continue the conversations. Remember, um, I don't remember which Sunday is the first Sunday in September. Um, but the first Sunday in September at 6 p.m., I'll be having these conversations again. So tell all of your friends, get everybody online. Let us as women help each other through the different phases that we go through. If I didn't have the support system I have in terms of my girlfriends, I think I would be in a madhouse. And I'm not joking because it is a lot for any one person to deal with. And if you don't have a good support system, you are going to get depressed. You are going to suffer from that depression. So gather your friends, have real conversations. I don't hide anything. I don't have time for that. May I get too old for that? So I am very open and very candid about what I talk about, especially when it comes on to my health, my sexuality, my everything. Because there are so many women out there who still don't know. They don't have the support system. They can't even go to a doctor. And sometimes, as I said before, if you go to the doctor, they too are going to tell you that you're not at that stage. Um, so we need to have those conversations. And I thank everyone for joining me tonight. I know it is your Sunday evening. I know you need to go and have your ice cream and cake. I'm going to lie down on your couch and watch a movie. And I, and I have intruded in that time and i really thank you for joining me i hope to see you back here and if there are topics or areas that you really want me to speak on and i hope that i can get other persons who are tra trained in this area as well to join the conversations um that you will join me come next month and that you will share and send me messages you can send me uh what they call it a direct message dm um, on my Facebook page, I'm on Instagram. Everything for me is I am Dion Cecile. Um, I am D E O N C E C I L E. That's the name of my website, my YouTube channel, my Instagram, my Facebook, my Pinterest, which I don't do anything with, um, my Twitter, my threads. I don't know why I'm depend so much because I really not use all of them. But anyway, yes, Marsha, thanks for telling the rest of us that you've already had your ice cream while I'm over here. Would love to have some. And instead, I'm going to sip on my water and go cook my dinner at this hour of the night. Yes. I'm probably just going to make a salad because I'm too hot and too lazy to do anything else. But thank you, ladies. Next time, we'll try and figure out this video thing so that I can have some of you talking to me, whether via straight video or just audio. I'd love to have us conversing. So I don't feel like I'm the only one here talking. Even though you're typing in the chat, I'd love to hear your voices. But I want to thank you for spending time with me this evening. Looking forward to seeing you in September. And don't be afraid to send me messages because we're going to have these conversations. All right. So have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. And if you're in Jamaica or you're Jamaican and you're online, happy 61st. Um, independence today's our independence day so happy independence have a wonderful productive week and i hope none of us have any symptoms this week all right have a good evening everyone thanks marcia see i see you next month with your ice cream yes i'm bad manning over here because i'd like some ice cream and i'm not going on to the on the road to get it so i'm going to have to do without it but have a good evening ladies Thanks for joining.